Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to TV with a special broadcast today about the demonstration Stop Forced Sexual Education in Primary Schools in Cologne, Germany, on January 18, 2014. The initiative Besorgte Eltern NRW, that is Concerned Parents of North Rhine-Westphalia, invited us to hear the speech and KTV was there live. Cologne was filled with people from every part of Germany, including the bordering countries, who all showed their solidarity with the initiative Besorgte Eltern NRW by coming and walking along. In his speech, the initiator of the movement portrayed the topic of forced sex ed and reminded hearers of the law still in effect, which would actually have to punish this behavior. But see and hear for yourselves. We'll now watch the film from Cologne. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Today we are reporting from the Roncalli Square in Cologne, Germany, where crowds have already gathered to hear a speech and march through the downtown area. The demonstration was organized by the initiative Besorgte Eltern NRW, Concerned Parents of North Rhine-Westphalia. The motto, Stop Forced Sex Education in Primary Schools, is supposed to bring to our attention a situation across the country, one which sadly is rarely reported about by the mainstream media, but that has tragic consequences for an increasing number of students and their parents. The forced participation of all students in mandatory sex education class also prohibiting any exemption. But the resistance among the people is growing since what happens in primary schools concerns children from every tire of society. More and more parents are standing up against it, even if surely not all can be here today. We are all excited to hear about the demands of the initiative and of the, in the name of all concerned parents as well as the reaction of public officials and the media. Now we will hear from the podium and afterwards we'll give back to the studio. Thank you for watching and stay informed. Dear participants in today's demonstration, thanks for coming today so numerously. I'd especially like to welcome all our guests and media representatives who've come a long way from all over Germany, Holland, Belgium and France. Hello. Dear protesters, I have here in my hand the press release from the County Superior Court of Hamm from August 26, 2013. It is the court order concerning the parents of a boy from the district of Warendorf. I quote, By the age of seven, in the first grade, this boy had already missed more than 40 days of primary school. Following this, he went to two other primary schools where he only attended a few days. In the court order it says literally, the parents refused to send their boy to school against his will. After numerous attempts by the school board, in vain to convince the boy to attend school voluntarily, this issue was finally transferred to the County Supreme Court, which withdrew the parental rights in school-related issues and, I quote, obligates the parents to make sure their son will go to school and motivate him to attend. So here, something which is just normal, attending school regularly, is used as a penalty. Even though the boy had been absent from school for many weeks, a remarkable verdict, we'll see why in just a moment. A second case which occurred in the same region and is the reason why we're here today looks completely different though. The little Melita Martins left the primary school sex education lesson because she started to feel uncomfortable with what was being taught. Remember we're talking about primary school. Even the school principal's attempt to pull her forcibly into the room failed and so the little girl sat in the teacher's room during the lesson. To better understand or make a comparison, she didn't leave school for a single day, but attended all the other lessons. In order to understand the behavior of this primary school girl, I'd like to briefly quote the VDR's report from the 28th of June 2013 about a similar incident at a school in Borken. In a sixth grade sex education class, rows of students collapsed while they were looking at pictures of genitals. Of course, the emergency physician was called immediately, and one child even had to be treated in the hospital. Yet it is fact that no one dragged 
these children back to their seats. Instead, all across Germany, people felt sorry for them. There were no consequences for the parents. They can't be blamed if the children start to feel uncomfortable. Back now to the elementary school girl who felt uncomfortable in the sex ed lesson. Even though Melita Martins had always made a positive impression at school and was known as a diligent, clever and engaged girl, the court showed no mercy in this case. After not attending a second class, our legal system struck mercilessly. The fine, which Melita's parents refused to pay, was followed by court prosecution, then a visit by the bailiff, and finally the case was transferred to the county supreme court, where the parents weren't allowed to defend themselves anymore. After a further last demand to pay, the Martins family was told that they had to go to prison. We're talking about a family with eight, soon nine kids here. The father has already served his jail sentence. The very pregnant mother still faces this, even though our basic constitutional law says in Article 6, Paragraph 4, that every mother has a right to protection and care by the community. Yet with this disproportionately extreme penalty, the case has not yet been settled because the fine is still supposed to be paid and the Martins family has more children who will soon face the same situation. How is it possible to have two totally different verdicts for the same offense of school absence, for missing one lesson, a fine and imprisonment, and for truancy over weeks, over years, only the requirement to now regularly send their child to school? Where is the guarantee of equal treatment? Dear demonstrators, this appalling example is unfortunately no longer an isolated case. For several years now, without public knowledge, parents whose children have missed the so important sex ed lessons have been imprisoned, even though we, the parents, according to Article 6, Paragraph 2 in our constitutional law, have the first right and obligation to raise our children. This leads me to the question, what kind of judges are those who pass such sentences and are still able to sleep well at night? What's going on in teachers who act tolerantly towards truants? but get nervous about those who refuse sex ed? How does a policeman feel who has to carry out such a sentence on behalf of the people? It also leads me to the question, what exactly is so extremely important in this primary school sex ed, causing such radical measures to be taken? The biggest argument, I think, which you hear over and over again, is the so-called teenage pregnancy, which one wants to avoid through early sexual education. This argument, though, is contradicted, amongst others, by the Süddeutsche Zeitung with several counter-arguments. I quote, According to a U.S. study, teens become pregnant earlier if they watch too much TV, especially broadcasts about flirting, sex, and partnership. These programs influence teenagers in their sexual behavior. With the sexual contents on TV, also the number of teenage pregnancies has increased. Researcher Anita Chandra reported in the Journal of the American Academy of Pediatrics. Another quote from another report of the Süddeutsche Zeitung. Teenage pregnancies have kept research institutions busy for a few years now, not least because its number has been rising since the mid-90s, and sexual researchers as well as family politicians are searching for explanations and remedies. So if even our established mass media confirm that teenage pregnancies are constantly rising despite an increase in sexual education and sexual entertainment on TV and on the Internet, a forced sex ed in primary school can hardly be the solution. One should rather take the producers of these series, films, and Internet websites to court and sentence them as well as take care as well as take care that children won't be able to get hold to hard pornography anymore 
This, however, doesn't seem to be in the interest of our federal government. Why on earth is our family policy, with a radical course of dictatorship, aiming at literally sexualizing our youngest? There's no other way of putting it, really. If you think I'm exaggerating, you should order the brochure of the federal center called Körper, Liebe, Doktorspiele, Body, Love and Doctor Games. According to agency, it is an informational guide for parents about the sexual development of children aged 1 to 3 years. I'm not talking about school grade, but age 1 to 3. If you read this brochure, you should not have eaten anything beforehand. Parents with small children, I recommend you maybe cover your, your, their ears right now. I'd like to read a quote from the chapter from the chapter First Year of Life. Some children already in their first year of life show curiosity about their parents' genitals, especially while bathing. They want to look at them, sometimes touch them. In this case, also, you shouldn't try to stop them. Sick. Completely sick. Quote from another chapter, The Second Year of Life. With some small children, self-stimulations up to orgasm have been observed from the 17th month on. Masturbation distinguishes itself between boys and girls in that girls rather use objects to help. A child does not distinguish between tenderness, sensuality, or genital touching. About the subject of taking a bath together, the author writes, There is no bodily region which is secure from intensive exhibition. This, of course, also includes the genitals, which sometimes causes stimulating emotions with the adults. Quote from the chapter, Third Year of Life. It's important all explanations concerning conception do not only touch the technical, but describe the emotions a woman and a man may have during the act of conception. Remember, we're talking about three-year-olds here. Three-year-old toddlers. In this context, the, quan the question often arises whether it's bad for a child if it accidentally becomes a witness of parents having intercourse. In most cases, the child might not feel and experience the situation as strong as the parents. So, no problem if the kids are present here. What sounds like advertising for pedophilia here is in fact an informational brochure from our Federal Center for Health Education. Unknowing parents who are dependent on exterior advice are following these perverse suggestions and I ask myself seriously, who will be held responsible for this? Who takes responsibility for the damage caused in the children? Who takes the consequences the children right our German penal code at least gets quite clear on the subject paragraph 176 liable to imprisonment from three months to five years is anyone who one engages in sexual activity in the presence of a child two induces a child to engage in sexual activity three influences a child with written materials to induce it to engage in sexual activity, four, or presents a child with pornographic illustrations or images, audio material with pornographic content, or that kind of speech. So I think it's really clear. Our criminal law therefore gives a clear basis on which many sex education teachers in primary schools, as well as many parents who obey the mentioned brochure, can be imprisoned, because according to the law they are criminals. In reality, however, those parents are being imprisoned who worry about the damage that's done to their children through pornography at German schools, and soon also nursery schools, and want to protect them. Parents who carry out pornography in front of their children, though, are being mollified. Wikipedia, by the way, defines pornography this way. Porno pornography is the direct presentation of human sexuality or the act of intercourse. Dear demonstrators, according to N24 and lots of other news broadcasting, a worldwide increasing number of pedophiles is reported. 
If we take away the natural barrier from our kids today, we'll play them into the hands of these sick people tomorrow. Even worse, we make these sick people socially acceptable. The argument that this early sex ed is meant to prevent sexual abuse is in light of current developments just weak. If we arouse sexual desires in these little ones too early, they'll also want to gratify them, and that's what they do when they're older, as we see. Moreover, the children are diverted from the more important things at their age, like learning for the right school subjects, the pure childlike playing with other kids, and the discovering of the great big world around them. You only have to think back to your own childhood. What did you like to do? Or if you were missing out on anything by not having this sex ed. Due to the fact that critics of this early sex education are generally presented as religious or prude, a huge part of the population isn't aware anymore of the dramatic extent we are facing here. At this point, I really want to appeal to the media present here to support us. Let's together show respect and appreciation to the parents who bring children into the world and raise them, investing many years, and thereby do one of the greatest services to our country. For families with values, no matter if religious, cultural, or ethnic, are increasingly being pressured by these education policies and aren't taken seriously anymore. We say that has to stop, right? And I'm asking you now, do we want our kids to grow up as sexual beings and to lose every barrier? Do we want our children to be able to get a hold of pornographic material almost anywhere, hardly hindered at all? Do we want our courts to take years to clear up the pedophile past of the Green Party with no noteworthy consequences having been taken? Do we, on the other hand, want parents like the Martins who care about the well-being of their children and who are giving offspring to our country to be imprisoned? Do we want the highly pregnant mother of eight children, Louisa Martins, to go to prison because she acted for the good of her child? Then let us together stand for this no until we are finally taken seriously. At this point, I want to express our solidarity with the Martins family and all the other parents who had to experience this injustice the same way and promise them that we won't remain silent. The only thing that will help us now is spreading comprehensively information to the whole population and that all of us stand up together because to say it in the words of Bertolt Brecht, where injustice turns into justice, opposition is a must. Thank you very much for your attention. We'll begin now with the march through downtown. There will be a closing meeting to our demonstration. First we'll all march through the city and then there'll be we'll end up at the square again for a few closing remarks. Now we want to just raise our voices and let everyone know what is going on here.
Children need love and not sex. Children need love and no sex. I can only say that we just couldn't believe it when we heard that these caring parents, you know, one gives up a lot, invests a lot, invests a lot. I have four kids, eight kids is double that, crazy. Dear demonstrators, to end today's demonstration, I really want to just thank all participants and helpers especially those of you who drove a really long way, invested yourselves, and I want to set a milestone today and say, hey people, today we don't just leave anonymously, just having taken part in the protest and then leaving again. Something came into existence here, really a common concern, a common concern for our children, and I want to encourage you, to encourage you really, we need newsletters. We want to hear from you when protest demonstrations are happening. You should hear from us. It's important when, for example, there are people here from Bochum, from Allgäu, from Holland, France, etc. People. So when you protest, when you protest, and you get something going, let us know about it, okay? I tell you the only real solution we have is the network we're building here. That is our solution. So make sure, don't just drive home, go without signing up here. Whatever you want, your, your phone number, email, whatever, you know, just let us stay in contact, whatever, stay in touch with each other. I think it's really valuable when we stick together. And I'd like to appeal to the media, to our politicians, Child Protection Services, and all the other agencies holding responsibility too. I appeal to the judges, the courts, to the police, Please, please, listen to your hearts right now. Don't allow yourselves to be misled. Every one of us knows exactly what is right. Exactly. Every judge knows exactly. Justice is on our side, and the hearts are on our side. And concerning the demonstration today, it's really important to me to give a heartfelt thanks to the Cologne Police Department, who in advance really organized a super route for us. They were always ready to help, and now during the march they were really on our side. A huge thanks. Yeah, and we need a continuation. 
Any media people? You know, come on up front. Ask questions. I'll be up here to the left. You can ask us questions, do whatever. But report, report. Don't remain silent about this. And important, don't twist this again. It's out to twist this around into this religious corner again. It's out. It has nothing to do with that anymore. That's out. It has nothing to do with that. It's really annoying, and it really has nothing to do with this. It affects people from all kinds of society. All backgrounds. All children. So... A huge thank you to all of you. I just really like this sentence from Brecht. It fits so well, and I'd like to close with that. Where injustice turns into justice, opposition becomes a must. And that's what we're going to do. Thanks again. Ladies and gentlemen, forced sexual education is clearly something that many are dealing with because many came to draw attention to the growing problem in our primary schools by their presence. Maybe this will be the catalyst for further events such as this, where peaceable citizens take a hold of their right to object so that the forced sex ed is dissolved in our nation for the good of our children. Now, after the report from Cologne, we say goodbye for today. If you are interested in further background information on the topic, we suggest the documentaries translate into English, the founding fathers of early sexualization and for sex, as well as the KTV broadcast in German, Pornographie als Schulfach and Frühe Sexualisierung fördert Pädophilie. The links are found in the following sources. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.